We are back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our fourth and final segment, which is talking about some new stories around the league, transaction-related and injury-related, just some stuff I wanted to bunch in and uh, talk about. So first off, we have uh, Lane Thomas going on the 10-day IL for the Nationals with a MCL sprain. We just learned that it was a grade 2 sprain, so it should be out a little bit. I don't think it'll be out much longer than the 10 days, maybe 15 or 20, but that's not that significant of time for the Nationals and Lane Thomas. Lane Thomas is, of course, one of the more bright spots for the Nationals, a guy who is a really, really solid player. And, uh, yeah, it's just really, really great. So it is unfortunate that he is out, but at the same time, again, the Nationals aren't that good, and it's not, again, it's not like they're trying to compete. So it's not horrible for them. Again, you'd not like, you wouldn't really like to see him get out anyways. I think he's going to be a good trade piece for you guys at the trade deadline. I think Thomas you know, could get back, back something for teams that are desperate for a corner outfielder if you do want to trade him. I don't know if they will because they think they're, they might be closer to a competition than some people expect. But, uh, yeah, unfortunate that he gets in the injured list, but I don't think he should be out that long. I think he'll be back relatively quickly, so we'll be watching that, and we'll see when he uh, does get back. So, yeah. Next, we have a bit of surprising news here. Jordan Walker has been sent down by the St. Louis Cardinals this early into the season. Now, Walker, of course, is one of the better players for the Cardinals, well, at least was before he got sent down, has been a guy that really showed a lot of hitting prowess through his time in the minor leagues and in the major leagues last year as well. You know, it was, it was a top prospect for the Cardinals for a long time with them, got called up last year, made the OMB roster, performed really well, Had a, was, really good, was a really good hitter. Um, the problem with Walker is he plays zero defense. He's not good at defense whatsoever. It is just not his thing. He is a straight hitting guy. So when he's not hitting, he provides about little to none value for a team. And so far, he was not hitting for the Cardinals. It is 424 so far. We've been we're around a month into the season. You've got to show something, and he just didn't. So that is the reason I believe that he was sent down. His hitting just started off so poorly. And just so unfortunate. So he did have to be sent down. And yeah, it is unfortunate, but I think he could come back. You're really hoping, for the Cardinals, you're really hoping he is not a bust. He was a guy that was very highly touted in the in the Cardinals organization for a long, long time. A top prospect over there. So I think all Cardinals fans are really hoping that Thomas um, is okay and just needs to get his swing back up for the minor leagues. I don't think they would have sent him down in normal circumstances, but with them, with the Cardinals struggling as they are, I think they were desperate to kind of switch everything up a little bit, kind of get a spark going and show everyone, you know, we don't care who you are, you're not untouchable, you'll be sent down, you'll be traded if you're not performing, and I just think the Cardinals want to get a spark into their team with how mediocre they have been. Now, most people, including myself, expect them to be mediocre, so I don't really know if this is news to them or their fan base, but... Overall, I don't really agree with the decision to send Walker down. Yes, he wasn't showing much, he wasn't hitting, but he's still a really young player, only in his second season. I still believe in his hit tool a lot. I still think he'd be a really solid player at the major league level. So I, don't, I think it was a little too early for them for him to be sent down. I think they were kind of rushing it or being a little bit too, I guess, forceful. is not really the right word, but kind of kind of overbearing on him. I, don't, I wouldn't have sent him down this early. I would have waited a little bit, but I get why, I get why they did it. I just don't personally agree with it, but I still think he's going to be back relatively soon, and I still think he's going to be a really good MLB player in the future. Just really hoping he doesn't become a bust now because he, I was very high on him. He's been a top prospect in the Cardinals organization for a long time. People forget, you know, uh, him, the Cardinals' young future looks so bright. Him, Dylan Carlson, uh, really those two guys at the forefront, and both those guys really haven't lived up to expectations. It seemed like they could have traded both for Juan Soto a few years ago, he was getting traded from the Nationals, and they and they didn't, and they instead hold, uh, held on to them. So, just shows you how different, how how highly touted they were, and how different baseball could have been if they didn't make in that trade. So, um, yeah, I'll be watching Jordan Walker's future and seeing what he does here. The Red Sox are considering free agent first baseman C.J. Crone, according to multiple reports. Now, Crone was with the Red Sox in uh, in minor league camp, but got released. So they are considering re-signing him and giving him a major league contract to help with their first base woes. Tristan Casas is going to be out a little while with an injury, and I think getting uh, bringing back Crone would make some sense. Brings a good brings a good first base and infield depth to the to the Red Sox team. 
I think you need some of it. And, you know, Crone is just a veteran bat, a veteran power bat that knows what he's doing at the plate. If he gets hot, he can be a really good player. And if not, again, just gives you good at bats, brings you good depth. So I think it would be a smart move for the Red Sox to bring back C.J. Crone. I think he's a really solid player and just overall um, is good and would make a lot of sense to bring back for the Red Sox. Some news that just broke before I went on stream, like a few hours. Blake Snell is going to the I.O. with an adductor strain and is missing his start today versus the Mets. The Mets game is on as we speak. Currently a 0-0 in the top of the third. Sean Manaya just got out of a bases loaded, no outs jam against his former team, so that is something. But going back to the uh, Blake Snell situation here, yeah, going on the injured list at, at with an abductor strain just continues his horrid start with the Giants so far. Of course, not with the Giants late, got no spring training, has made three starts with them. All of them have been awful. He has an ERA around 12, and now just another um, unfortunate setback for him going on the I.L. with an abductor strain. But you're hoping it isn't long-term. And what you're kind of hoping is that, okay, you know what? Snell didn't get to rest. He kind of just signed and then went went off and signed, you know kept going with us. He didn't get to spring training. We think this injury could be a chance for him to relax, take it easy, reset, and get back healthy. And when he gets back in the field, becomes the Blake Snell we all know, becomes that two-time Cy Young Award winner, you know, becomes one of the best pitchers in baseball, which he is when he is at his best. Again, I talked about it how I talked about it a few times how I think I thought one of the reasons Snell wasn't signed early was because teams did have some worry about him and his downsides. You know, when he is on the top, Snell is one of the best pitchers in baseball. He's a two-time Cy Young winner really good starter but when he's not he's not he has such low lows that you kind of have to take the good with the bat he doesn't go deep into games he doesn't he sometimes he walks a lot of people he throws a lot of pitches so when he's at his lowest he's not a good pitcher but when he's at his high when you hit his ceiling when he hits his ceiling it's such a positive for a team that a lot of teams I think were willing to take on the advantage like the giant were willing to take on that mystery like the Giants were but again there are some downsides I think that was a factor of why he was on the market so late and we're seeing it now but hopefully this injury isn't long term and he can get back to the field rather quickly and hopefully um, he becomes a, the Blake Snell we all know and helps this Giants team again when he's healthy uh, that ace tandem of, of Logan Webb and Blake Snell is going to be absolutely filthy it, just really phenomenal so I'm watching that and I'll be interested to see Snell's future with the Giants and how he en does end up performing. It has been reported that Merrill Kelly for the Denver and Dimax is going to be out over a month being on the injured list. Now, we talked about Merrill Kelly a few times, how it was just there was a setback and he was going to be put on the injured list. And Tori Lovello has now said that this is not the news we wanted and he's going to be out for around a month because of the soldier injury. Now, I thought he was only going to be out the minimum of 15 days, maybe a little bit more, but a tiny bit. But a month is a big setback. As Lovello said, this is not something they were expecting. So losing Kelly for that long does hurt, I'd say. Losing him, losing a water Rodriguez, you know, just a really tough break for the Diamondbacks right now. They need their pitching depth to come in handy and come in clutch. Uh, I mean, right now they need these guys to... They need these guys like Logan Allen, um, like Brandon Fott, like Ryan Nelson to pitch to their full potential and pitch really, really well. So we're watching that right now and seeing what the Diamondbacks pitching staff can do with the regulars out. But uh, it'll be interesting, and we'll see how they do fill in with guys like Merrill Kelly and Eduardo Rodriguez being out. Jordan Montgomery was signed for this reason, so we'll be seeing how he does there. He's also pitching today, so we'll be talking about his start tomorrow, of course. Johnny Cueto is finally signed, and he signed with the Texas Rangers. Cueto, one of the top ratings left in the market, did sign a minor league contract with Texas. I think this is a great move for Texas. I think it's a great move for Cueto. Cueto could get a real opportunity to start games with Texas if he does perform well in the minor leagues. With all the pitching injuries they have and with the pitching, with the pitching, uh, with the injury prone pitching rotation they do have with guys like Andrew Heaney and Nate Evaldi, guys who have had major pitching injuries in the past, I think it could be a good sign for Cueto. I think. Signing, signing a veteran arm like this for the Rangers was a good idea with all the injuries you've had, and I think Cueto going to a team where he can really make an impact has a chance to make some real starts, I think would be a really great sign and um, is a, just a really good decision by him. So, yeah, I'll be watching that, and I'll be seeing if he does make some starts, but overall I think it's a really good move by Texas and by Cueto himself. Final one we have is Brian Bayo being placed on the injured list kind of suddenly by the Red Sox. 
It doesn't seem to be a long-term thing, but he is going to be out a little bit, and the Red Sox has just been killed by injuries recently. He is going on the injured list with a with right lat tightness, which is um, not great, of course. You don't want to see that. But hopefully he can be back soon. Again, they've been crushed by injuries. Bayo now, you've had Devers. You've had Tyler O'Neill. Um, some of your pitchers as well, who's uh, just a few of them whose name I'm forgetting. So, yeah, um, not great and not something you want to see, but hopefully Bayo's back relatively soon. And he's back to being one of the best pitchers in the Red Sox rotation. But, man, have they been killed by injuries. Uh, two games wrong currently. The Cardinals just beat the Dimebacks 5-1, to one, so nice win by them there. And Francisco Lindor just hit his third home run of the year to make it 2-0 to nothing Mets in the uh, top of the third. So Mets trying to not get swept in the series. Good job by Lindor to come in clutch and uh, give them the lead. So, yeah, good job there. But, uh, yeah, that is the show for today, guys. I want to thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell to not only get notified when I upload, but all, when all the other great content creators on this channel upload. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram for more content and updates. Thank you once again for watching. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you at Baseball Throws Us tomorrow. Bye, guys. Thanks. <laughs>